Hey, welcome back to the Hell Fudge Show. Today, we're going to be talking about something that I've been thinking about for a long time, and I'm sure other people have thought of it too. There's not that much unique anymore. After however many thousands of years human beings have been on the planet, pretty much everything's been thought of more or less. Right? Right. So, let's say, let's say we want to affect real change within the House of Representatives in the United States. Most of my content will be about the United States, because that's where I live, right? But there are a few ways to enact real change real fast in our House of Representatives. These changes are one, term limits, two, the second one is going to be reducing their salary to the median wage of where they represent. That will have a dramatic effect. Number three is to limit their stock options. You see, over and over again, people who are making $174,000 a year, which puts them into the top 10% of Americans, as far as salary is concerned, making millions on the stock market. That is, um, well, not good for the average American. And it disconnects their representative from the reality that their constituents are facing, obviously. That's three. The fourth one is to, uh, well, get rid of lobbyists filling the coffers of our House of Representatives. It all comes back to money and time. The more they are paid, the more they are gifted, the more they can um, buy and sell stocks, the more disconnected they're going to be from their constituents. The more, connect the more disconnected they are from their constituents, the worse off the constituents are. So, I think uh, term limits are necessary, right? Let's say three, maybe four terms. Maybe. Maybe even just two. Like the president, right? So, and then the second one that's going to be a little bit uh, better for the constituents would be putting them at the median salary of the area that they represent. So, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, Googling while I have you here. What is the median income of, uh, let's say, Sagadahawk County in Maine? Thirty nine thousand seven hundred and one dollars in twenty twenty two. So someone representing that area would make that much a year. Boom. And then if you wanted to bump it up to household income, right? Seventy seven thousand five hundred and ninety one. Right now, they're starting off at one hundred and seventy four thousand dollars a year. And I want to see Los Angeles County, right? Los Angeles County is uh, 35,869. 35,869. So if you represent Los Angeles County, the home of stars, the home of the celebrities, the home of a huge homeless epidemic 
you will make $35,000. Well, $35,869. Or, even if we're a little bit more liberal with it, 83411 for a household. Now, let's take that right let's uh let's see so if uh let me open my sticky notes so i can jot this down i just want to see sticky notes let's see here so eighty three thousand four hundred and eleven. now let's take the uh average price of a two-bedroom apartment in Los Angeles County. Hmm. $2,691. Now, to qualify to uh, get a two-bedroom apartment in Los Angeles County, unless you're dealing with a private dealer, right? It is two and a half. You have to make two and a half times, or is it three and a half? We'll be nice and say it is two and a half. I believe it's three and a half, though. Times 2.5. You have to make in a month to qualify at two and a half, which again, I think it's three and a half, but two and a half, you have to make $6,727.50 a month. Let's multiply that by 12, which means you have to make $80,730 a year to qualify for a two bedroom apartment. Now, with that figure being uh, what it was, the 83 yeah if you're making the median household income you'll qualify for apartment granted that your uh, you know your credit is good which don't get me started on that scam yet that's another episode so if I believe it's actually how much do you have to make to qualify for a two-bedroom apartment in LA County. Oh. Okay, so, according to Google and Fox 11, where, is this, where this is coming from, right, uh, the 40X rule, which, bruh, the guideline says that the household income must be at least 40 times the monthly rent. For example, we found that the median rent for a two-bedroom in Los Angeles is $2,480 per month and will require $99,200 to secure. That's about 168% of the L.A. median household income. That is crazy. And, uh, yeah, you need to make at least 2.5 to 3 to qualify for the apartment. Right? And that that is, that is fucking nuts. All right? Because people don't rent because they want to. People, most people, would rather own a house. Right now, with uh, mortgages and interest rates being as high as they are right now, because of uh, whatever it is we're going through, mostly BlackRock and other companies uh, buying up all the frickin' properties, right, for uh, apartment buildings and uh, Airbnb and shit like that, right, the, the housing prices have skyrocketed, and since the economy is so bad, unless you're the stock market that nobody can afford shit anymore, then, uh, yeah, 
there we go but you put those house of representatives on the median salary for their districts you're going to see a lot of change real fast granted that they're not given kickbacks or bribes from lobbyists and they're barred from the stock market right because uh we don't need a bunch of uh, Pelosi's running around or Crenshaw's, right? And both parties are guilty of it. Both parties are greedy. They don't, in general, care about their constituents. Unless it's election season, right? So, you put people in there, two terms two terms max right three if we're being generous because some people want to be in there three and then um you limit their salary to the median wage of their constituents you bar them from the stock market and you block lobbyists from filling their bank accounts that's how you affect real change in our House of Representatives. And you know what? The same goes for every branch of every single branch of the government in America. So, what is what is the median income in the United States. The median income of the United States is thirty-seven thousand five hundred and eighty-five dollars as of twenty twenty-two. That is how much the president of the United States should make. And if you disagree with this, why? Why shouldn't they be making the average of the American people? Do you have an answer? Or is it just a gut feeling, right? You want to affect real change with these people, with our politicians, with our ruling class who are bought and paid for by the corporations? Cut off the feeding tubes from said corporations. Hold them accountable. Hold them in line with the people that elected them. It's the only way. It is literally the only way we will affect real change. And that's okay. That's okay. How much does a president make? The president makes $400,000 a year. Think about all of the presidents in our lifetime. Have any of them been worthy of making $400,000 a year? In my lifetime, we've had Reagan... We've had Bush, we've had Clinton, we've had Bush Jr., W, we've had Obama, we've had Trump, and now we have Biden. None of those people, in my opinion, have been worth $400,000 of the taxpayers' money at all. They're barely worth $37,000 a year. And think about how much more money they make and spend on your dime. The taxes that you pay through every transaction that you do. Your local governments, your state governments, your federal government. Think about all of the way that we're, all of the ways that were taxed 
all of that is funneling towards the people that deserve it the least. It's either going straight into the politicians' pockets or is being used to fund wars overseas. Is that a good use of our tax dollars while people are sleeping on the streets? While our infrastructure is falling the fuck apart? With potholes and sinkholes propping, popping up on every street, in every park, and in every yard? Where is our tax dollars going? Uh, I just said going to special interests, it's going to politicians, it's going to weapons, it's going to bombing people, right? And unless we enact some real change and elect some real change-driving politicians, which I don't see any right now, they're all establishment morons who uh, get paid a huge amount of money to do literally nothing I mean if you see it another way let me know but why aren't our taxes going towards things that benefit all of us why are our streets so bad why are our streets so crowded with the houseless why are there so many houseless are we going to blame them strictly for it? Are we going to blame local economies? Are we going to blame corporations? Some of some of that is valid, right? A lot of jobs in the 80s, 90s, 2000s were outsourced either offshore or near shore, right? Which left a lot of people unemployed. With the rise of automation and AI, Rightly or wrongly, people are being laid off left, right, and center with no jobs. If you just scratch a little bit beneath the surface of those job reports that come out every month, they paint a very, very, very different picture of what the establishment is telling us. Full-time jobs are down. Jobs for native-born Americans are down. Part-time jobs and jobs going to foreign-born people are up. And no, this is not a left versus right thing. This is not a black versus white thing. This is a top versus bottom thing. And it always has been, and it always will be. Gender, race, sexuality, those are all just fucking distractions from what's really going on. We have to wake up and realize that the people that we elect do not have our best interest in mind. I'm sure that some of them do. I'm speaking generally. The vast majority of the people that we elect don't give two shits about you. They only care about you when it comes time to re-elect them. And then, that's when they return to their hometown, isn't it? That's when they actually pay attention to you. But... How much better would Americans be if instead of funding a proxy war in Eastern Europe, that money was used to improve our infrastructure here at home? I bet that bridge that collapsed a few months ago wouldn't have collapsed if they had improved the infrastructure. Everything here is falling apart. And yet, we keep electing the same assholes over and over and over again. Let's take a look at the latest election. We are in 
2024. Summer 2024. We're, we are in stupid season when it comes to the election. It is Trump and Biden again for the first time since the last time. The both sides are stupid. But even more stupid are the people that propped them up to begin with. Now, I know back in 2016 and 2020, everyone thought that Bernie Sanders was going to get the Democratic National Convention primary win, right? Well, not everyone, but people on the internet, because people on the internet are a very small group of people compared to everyone else, or at least the active people online are uh, very, very vocal and everybody was pro Bernie, right? The DNC went with what people wanted. Well, they never do that, do they? But Clinton won in 2016 and then lost against Trump. And then uh, Biden won over all the other candidates. And they had some good ones. in 2020 and everybody online was shocked when they picked Biden everybody myself included I thought it was really going to go towards uh... no there was really no one else honestly there was uh, Bernie Sanders right although I did like uh, I did like Yang and I did like Gabbard right those were the only two that I actually liked out of that whole pick and Yang, mostly because he was uh, talking about the coming job losses from AI and automation, which we're seeing now, right? We're seeing four years later. And our current government has done nothing to help the normal people whose jobs have been or will be displaced by it. We're entering a new industrial revolution and nobody that's supposed to be has been either watching it or doing anything to limit the damages to real people about it. So, it is, like they say, what it is. And it's disgusting. So, it is what it is. But, why are they running again against each other? Because we, the people, have allowed so much hubris and so much stupidity and so much divide into us. Right? We invited it in like a fucking vampire. And now we are facing the consequences. Instead of trying to get some real change, we are just having a repeat of four years ago. And God knows what's going to happen this summer. People are either going to get really stupid or people are going to get really, really apathetic. Both of which are not good. Instead of looking at things with a clear head, looking back on history and seeing, hey, what are we doing? And then fixing that then uh, we're going to keep going down the path that we're going down right now. And let me tell you, this path is not good. When the average American cannot afford groceries, something is wrong. When grocery prices have gone up 400% in the last three years something is wrong and we need to fix it the people we elected to fix it aren't so we have to and there are multiple ways of fixing it 
one we could start growing our own foods except in the communities where that's illegal there are some communities where it's illegal to collect rainwater let alone planting a garden right sometimes that's out of the picture unless you want to uh get fines or arrested or um have your hoa come down on you because we all love our hoas don't we but something has to give doing what i suggested median salary for politicians term limits for all politicians limiting or eliminating stock options and eliminating lobbyists from donating to political campaigns are the ways to fix this and fix it fast but what do i know i'm just a talking head on youtube and spotify it is what it is and it will be what it will be unless we change it so this election season don't vote blue no matter who and don't vote red until you're dead party lines don't matter the they use your emotions against you if the democrats cared about roe versus wade they would have codified it into law a long time ago they've been using it to fundraise having it overturned in the supreme court was the best thing for them in terms of fundraising getting everybody mad getting everybody upset that has contributed more donations than ever before and people keep falling for it they don't give a shit about women's rights they care about their bank accounts and their stocks and their kickbacks they don't care about you they don't care if you can get an abortion or not they care about the money you can give them for them telling you that they're going to put it into law or let's face it they're not even talking about that anymore are they right now they're just complaining about the other side saying you can't so there we go do those four things we're gonna see some real change we don't do those four things we're going to keep going down the road we're going right now and we will see where that goes um just looking back at history it doesn't go anywhere good so this has been health the bleh, i fucked that up this has been the hellfud show and that's enough for now bye